Thank you very much for a kind introduction, uh, Dean O. It's my uh, great honor and pleasure to come to Korea University um, and give a, a, a seminar to very handsome, good-looking bunch of young people. How many of you cannot understand Korean? Raise your hands. Mm. Okay. How many of you cannot understand English? Raise your hands. <laughs> One, two. Okay. Chinese? Japanese? Okay. Uh, for the next 40 minutes or so, I will uh, talk about a uh, little bit of a pre uh, uh, present, present, as well as a little bit of future. Um, I know your areas of studies is not uh, in the IT or science or engineering. It's more of the humanities, uh, social sciences, and so on. But I'll try to um, give terminologies or as easy for you to understand as possible. And if you have any questions during my talk, please uh, feel free to raise your hand or a scream and ask questions, okay? And, um, okay, so this talk is based on mostly on my experience and based on the work that I carried out at KT uh, for the past two years. Um, and the, the materials, things are uh, pretty up to date. Uh, I gave my last talk uh, in January uh, to uh, international group as well. Uh, so I have modified slightly, but pretty well the uh, same. Um, so, uh, I'm sure um, some of you understand what uh, the government mentions means about Dynamic Korea. I'll give my version of Dynamic Korea and uh, then how Korea has developed in the past few years to where we are right now. And uh, I see many uh, international students that are here today and I'm sure the reasons for you uh, being here and studying at Korea University has something to do uh, with uh, the, the current state of this country. Okay. And then I'll talk about ICT convergence and how it can shape or how it's been shaping uh, this country as well as many other countries and how uh, it can play an uh, important role in how we work, how we live, how we enjoy our lives, okay? And then uh, summarize my talk. So, Dynamic Korea. Um, the photo that you see on the left is uh, what's left over from the Korean Civil War from 1950 to 1953. How many of you remember or know when that war started? 1950, what month, what date? June 25th. Uh, South Korea invaded North Korea, right? <laughs> okay, so after three years of uh, uh, fighting. They, that's what we were left with. And this is part of what we have. So a little over 60 years from almost nothing to the country where uh, many, many people around the world are envying. Although we have a long way to go to be uh, close to, say, uh, more developed countries like US, Canada, France, 
uh, UK, Germany, and so on. Now, over the past 60 years, our GDP has uh, grown almost 27,000 times. And the trade, uh, about 2,800 times. Okay? And it's been a remarkable growth, remarkable development. Oh, uh, sorry, was going backwards. Now, I have a talk uh, that the title is uh, another talk that I give to international people is that Korea is living in the future of many other countries. What do I mean by that? Well, there are many things happening in Korea uh, on the streets, uh, various places, and things happen in a year or two later in other countries, including US, Japan, and other countries, more developed countries. In developing countries, a few more years later down the road. Okay? I'll give you a couple of examples. So, we have, thanks to KT, SKT, LG+, those are the three uh, telecom service providers in Korea. And through a, a fierce competition, these three service providers have laid the best infrastructure in the world that the people even the telecom service providers from other developed countries are envying. Um, while I was working at KT as CTO, uh, CTO from uh, France Telecom, now they call Orange, uh, and Telefonica, uh, and other countries, they came to visit me and asked me, James, can you tell us how you cost-effectively deployed LTE network? And then a few months later, they visited again. The question is, James, how did you cost-effectively deploy LTE advanced? Then a few months later, then they came back. How did you deploy a wide spectrum or 광대역 LTE so cost-effectively? You know, they want to learn. They haven't started deploying. But Korea, uh, because of the competition, we've been deploying the fastest network in the world, both wireless, mobile, as well as uh, wired infrastructure. So let me see. How many of you are subscribers of KT? Raise your hands. Very good, okay. <laughs> now, how many of you are subscribers of S SKT? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> how about LG Plus? Not too many? Mm, that's not bad. <laughs> anyway, I don't work for KT anymore, so I don't blame. I actually used to bring some gifts from KT when I come to uh, talk like this, and then uh, I gave, uh, you know, coupons and things to, um, to the audience for those who are asking questions. But not today, sorry. Um, so, uh, this, uh, I'm sure you've been to Gangnam area, Gangnam um, subway station. This video shows there's so many phone shops, smartphone shops. And this is not operated by I, any of those three service providers. These are private small companies that sell smartphones from all three companies. And uh, these stores have increased so many. And if you're studying economics, if you're studying management, 
uh, if you're studying social behavior and so on, this is a good topic to take and try to understand why are there so many phone shops that are not operated by service providers? How many of you are from US? Raise your hands. Okay, we've got a, a half dozen. Canada? Oh, good. I'm a Canadian, by the way. Uh, how about uh, Japan? Anyone from Japan? One, very good. Um, France? Ah, oui. Uh, <laughs> Germany? Wow, very good. UK? Uh, Italy? Um, okay. Um, um, okay. <laughs> anyway, if you go to your countries and other countries in the developed countries, the G20 countries, say, you don't really see that kind of uh, shops. You see AT&T shop, Verizon shop in US, or Sprint shop. Or near the service providers, if you go to Canada, you see, you see Rogers shop, Bell Canada shop, or Telos shop. These are all service providers who open the shops and sell their phones and services. Now these, uh, the, so it's a very strange ecosystem in Korea, which is really good for consumers, for all of you, for ordinary people who are buying phones and things, it's great. You can get cheap phones at very, very good rate. Okay, and you can change smartphones very, very quickly, uh, as opposed to every once in two years or once in three years in most other countries. Now, because of the competition, the, we have 2G, this is technology, wireless communication technology, 2G, third generation, LT is considered fourth generation, LT advanced, Gwangdaeok or wide spectrum LT advanced, and then Wi-Fi, Wi-Bro, mobile WiMAX, DMB, digital multimedia broadcasting. We can watch TV, uh, live cast TV on subways. So here's a, a scene that you see, you probably seen every day. What do people do on subways? They don't talk much these days. They don't read paper newspapers anymore. It's hard to find people reading paper books. This is the kind of environment that we service providers have created and it's wonderful for uh, users. Okay. People are uh, watching dramas over mobile YPTV, uh, IPTV or they're uh, using chatting or social networking, uh, browsing, reading news, or reading books, and sending email, and so on. So when people come from other countries, other uh, telcos, at government people, and so on, my favorite tour for foreigner is, is that I take them, I give them a tour of my, our subways, and then show what kind of environment that we have created for our uh, uh, users. Uh, in that way, you're very lucky to be here in Korea to experience this kind of environment. It's terrible for service providers. We have to spend a lot of money to deploy these kind of networks and, and manage. Um, the smartphone adoption rate in Korea is considered about 73% and daily usage about 1.7 hours per person on average. Um, here's a graph. In 2009, this is the time, uh, late 2009, KT uh, brought in iPhone to Korea and Samsung was a screaming at KT. Why? Samsung Electronics, who makes these uh, Galaxy phones, or at that time they did not make Galaxy phones. 
they made stupid phones, <laughs> really terrible phones. But they were screaming at KT for it bringing in, introducing iPhones. Can anyone tell me why Samsung was screaming and mad at KT? Yes. That's uh, partially uh, correct. I mean, they were dominating player. They were number one seller in Korea, but they knew iPhone was much better phones than what they were producing. So if KT brought in iPhone, selling iPhones, they feared that you know, their market share would go down the drain. In fact, it was a good thing for Samsung Electronics. It was a good thing that KT brought in iPhone to Korea at the time. Because of that, Samsung hurried. They made Galaxy phones. They made Galaxy One. The Omnia phone that they had before, Windows-based, I don't know if anyone used that, but it was a terrible. I almost sued them for, um, you know, calling by itself to someone that I don't even know or whatever. Anyway, um, so it actually woke them up and they quickly hurried and they made Galaxy S, S2, S3, S4, and Galaxy Notes and so on. They're number one selling uh, vendor around the world. And many Samsung executives actually thank KT for doing that. Otherwise, they could have been a company similar to Nokia. Okay? Not uh, ready for changes. In some sense, uh, Canada's BlackBerry, the research in motion, they're in a similar situation now, that they felt so confident that their product will go very far. But in fact, they didn't, right? And uh, LG Electronics, on the other hand, uh, they did not jump onto the smartphone development as fast. So they fell behind, way behind Samsung. Anyway, um, so this was when we brought in iPhones, not too much traffic until uh, 2011 and so on. Now about more than 300 times traffic uh, load growth than uh, several years ago, and it's continuously growing. The Korea, uh, uh, according to, um, oh, it was a, <coughs> this is international uh, figure, uh, it's only a, a few months old, uh, several months old, 68% of the Korean people ex uh, change their smartphones. Let's see, let's do survey here. How many of you changed your smartphones within the last year? Okay, hands down. Let's, let me ask you, how many of you had your current phone longer than one year? Okay, about half, okay. How many of you had your current phone longer than two years? Really? Oh, many of their foreign students. <laughs> okay, students, um, okay, that's understandable. But in Korea, 68% of the smartphone users change their phones in less than a year. And this is the fastest in the world. And it may, go on a, uh, it may have gone in, on the uh, uh, Guinness World Book of Records. And, uh, and again, this is due to uh, very uh, fierce competition. Okay. So if you're studying competition, market competition and so on, 
this is a really good topic for you to um, take on and, and to essay or, or your, your thesis on. Um, okay, sorry. Now, <coughs> the, the rise of the instant messaging apps. Okay. Kakao Talk, Line, uh, WhatsApp. These are the three most popular uh, apps used for exchanging messages, chatting, sharing photos and videos, uh, even lately, even making a voice calls. Okay. This app alone, I mean, among the three, Kakao Talk is the most popular in Korea. In Japan, the student from Japan, do you know which one is popular in Japan? Line. Line is number one in Japan. Uh, US and other countries, WhatsApp is more popular. But Line's been catching up. So Kakao Talk, um, as of February, we have about 130 million users. Okay. Now this app alone, 88% of the SMS revenue has disappeared from three service providers. In one year, that's two billion US dollars. Kapoom. Gone from their pockets. This SMS uh, service has been a very pro uh, prof uh, profitable business because after all, you send messages, texts, as opposed to videos. What's really, really causing the traffic load and uh, putting load on our networks is the videos. YouTube videos, dramas, sports, and so on that you watch. Well, texts, they're very, heavy, uh, very light. Voice, they're also very light in terms of traffic load. But it, it had been a very, very profitable business. But then, thanks to Kakao Talk, that business is almost gone. That's why service providers in Korea have been giving SMS service for free. Now, voice for almost for free. Okay. <clears throat> so, Line, uh, Kakao Talk started first. They were the number one. And in fact, KT, when I uh, started working for KT, we had uh, a similar instant messenger called uh, OLED Talk. In one of our executive meetings, our CEO was yelling at the person who, was de who, who developed this one. He said, who would use this kind of heavy messenger that when I send a photo, it arrives next day? <laughs> and Kakao Talk was developed by a startup, you know, IT-oriented people. OLED Talk was developed by these telcos. Telcos traditionally, uh, they put all the functionality that you can think of in equipment and systems, <coughs> just in case customers may want it, just in case uh, we have to use it. Okay, so they put too many functionalities. Uh, perhaps people use or they use only 10% or 5% of the functionality. And so th this is not just Korea. The telcos around the world have been practicing uh, deploying and things in this way, you know, over spec, uh, uh, specking, so that the cost of these systems are uh, a lot higher and longer to take to develop. Um, sorry, the interesting aspect last month, Facebook acquired WhatsApp at 
19 billion dollars. How much? 19 billion dollars. Is that a lot of money? Of course it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's, um, but compare, they claim that they have 450 million users around the world. Line has 370 million users. Pretty close. And they don't even allow uh, calling, voice calling. Uh, I use this one to talk to my wife and son in Toronto, Canada, almost every day while they're traveling or while I'm traveling. The quality has gotten much, much better these days. Do you people use Line at all? How many of you use Line? Raise your hands. Oh, okay, one third. How many of you use WhatsApp? Oh, one third. How many of you use Kakao Talk? Everybody, <laughs> almost. <laughs> These are what we call uh, OTT, over the top apps that run on um, the uh, networks that service providers um, uh, deployed. You also heard about network neutrality issue. How many of you heard about network neutrality issue? Oh, not too many, okay. Um, um, okay, I will not touch on that one. Okay, let's see. The, another interesting thing that uh, this black box, how many of you own cars? Okay, how many of you have this black box in your car? Okay. Um, so I'm showing here a little camera that you attach on the windshield. Okay. And this is called a dash cam or also called black box. Black box is known in airplanes for data recording and communication recording. <coughs> so excuse me. When airplanes accidentally go down, the first thing they look for is what? Black box to try to understand what really happened. Communication between the air control uh, towers, traffic towers, as well as the data from the airplanes, the condition that the airplane was in. And that black box uh, records all those. Well, this kind of does, this device, it actually uh, videotapes everything that happens in front of your, uh, the car while you're driving or while parked in a parking lot. So, oops. <laughs> well, that was uh, a little faster than. Do you know what happened here? Can you guess? Yes. I'm sorry? Yeah, he was not paying attention, definitely. He was either cacao talking <laughs> or uh, may have been falling asleep or something. Um, so that one's uh, by the driver itself. Last one. <laughs> Ouch. Well, these kind of videos, well, this was part of morning show. With this technology, they even have shows. Um, and with this, you know, before 
the police could not really tell what happened. These days, when police go to the accident sites, the first thing they check is whether the cars have installed the black boxes, these cameras, dash cam cameras. And they're used to identify who was at fault. Okay? And this is not popular around the world yet. Uh, but this has been, we've been using this for almost several years now. And these kind of things go to uh, other countries. In fact, about one year ago, I had a friend uh, who's a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley. He visited me, and then um, he's a Korean American. And then we decided to spend a few hours on uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. I took him to a close to a DMZ area, and uh, we had lunch, and then he was uh, asking me what was uh, interesting and new things in Korea. So he visits a few times a year to try to understand what's the new and exciting things are happening in Korea. Okay. And then I mentioned this one early last year, about 14 months ago, and he felt that was really, really fascinating. And it said, and then he checked, there were about a couple hundred uh, cars in the parking lot at that place. So we, after lunch, we decided to check how many cars actually have installed these kind of devices. And amazingly, about 50 to 60 percent of the cars have installed this. And they said, wow, this is great. I think this will happen in other countries. And I will invest and I will invest on those uh, technologies and related things. So this is another example of Korea living in the future of many other countries. Okay, so let me see if you've been studying well, uh, especially economics and the um, trade and things. Um, so, I already gave you a hint and answer. So, are we number one in smartphone uh, selling, the Korean industry, Samsung and LG put together? Or Samsung alone is number one uh, in the um, world market. How about memory and display? Are we number one? Are we as in Korea? You're in Korea. Although you're foreign students, you are in Korea, so you are all we. <laughs> okay? Are we number one? Is Korea number one in this area? Yes, it is. Uh, Samsung and uh, as well as SK Hynix it combined. Uh, memory chips, displays, and so on, number one in the world. How about shipbuilding? Oh, okay. You all agree. All agree. Yes, it is number one. And uh, China is coming right behind us, actually in all three areas. Are we number one in automobiles? No. Number two? No. Number three? Number four? No, actually we're number five. How about K-pop? <laughs> Definitely number one, right? And uh, booming around the world. Web TV. Um, <coughs> this is a latest technology, but used to provide uh, live cast TVs as well as VODs, in Katie's case, uh, satellite channels as well. So at your home, apartment, or so on, if you subscribe to our IPTV service from one of the three telcos, or even some of the cable companies are now providing smart set-top boxes to make it similar to smart TV. 
And most of the ones that are coming out now is based on web technology, HTML5 based. Okay, so you can watch things on um, you know, TV, on uh, laptops, on smartphones, and pads, and so on. And uh, the technology is, is very good that we're exporting. Uh, not number one yet, <laughs> but we're up there. Okay, now, because of this, the fastest communication infrastructure that the three service providers have laid out, uh, the ICT, okay, information and communication technologies, and the, the environment is considered as the world's best test bed. Test bed is an environment or place where you test things, right? So vendors, solution providers around the world are coming to Korea. They've been coming to Korea for the past 10 years, <coughs> and that number has been increasing. As I mentioned, CTOs and C-level executives from around the world have been visiting KT and other uh, service providers in Korea to try to ask, see if we can test their equipment, test their systems. Why? Why? Because we have the most advanced infrastructure in the world. Well, game, gaming is a big industry. Uh, we have companies that are developing games, but there are also many countries, including US, that are developing these online games. When they develop new games, they come to Korea first, and they want to test it out. If it goes well in Korea, then it will likely succeed in other countries as well. If it doesn't, eh, probably not good in other countries either. Uh, BMW, although it's not ICT related, although ICT technology is uh, going into cars more and more, BMW, because of this unique market, uh, they test this market with the new uh, models and so on. Outside of G Germany, this is the first place that they test. Uh, third example is uh, Rockers Wireless, a uh, specialized access point uh, manufacturing company out of Silicon Valley. Uh, the CEO visited me uh, about a year and a half ago. And we had a uh, couple of hours meeting and lunch together in my um, organization. And then she thanked KT for what KT had done three years ago now about four, about four or five years ago. I said, what did KT do for you? Well, she brought the latest equipment, access point equipment, and installed their equipment in Gangnam-yok area, Gangnam subway station area. You know how crazy it is. Hundreds of shops, thousands of thousands of people go uh, pass through there every day. Hundreds of thousands, actually. And they have access points, they have hundreds, thousands of access points in that small area. So when they installed their equipment, what happened? Didn't work. Because they never had this kind of environment before. They never tested this, their equipment in this kind of condition. So she brought her engineers from Silicon Valley, <coughs> worked on it for one month, and was able to fix uh, things with the help of KT. Then after that, she was able to sell anywhere in the world. Tokyo, New York, Paris, anywhere. No problem. Once they passed the, this test bed environment test here. And then after visiting me the following month, they went IPO'd. So she made lots and lots of money. The company became very rich. So we have the most advanced, very complex ICT environment. 
And the Korean people, including who are, you know, uh, honorable or the uh, people who are studying here, becoming Koreanized to a cer certain extent, early adopters and very fussy, choosy uh, customers. When they see a problem, they complain. Um, they they want to fix things. And fastest respondents for um, uh, latest gadgets and things. So drivers of development, well, there are many reasons for such a, a rapid development in Korea, but I believe our education, our dedication from our parents, uh, for example, about 15, more than 15% of the people's income is spent on their children's education. I think I spend more than 50% of my <laughs> income on my two children. Um, college enrollment rate is 84%. You know, this is probably one of the highest, if not the highest. And our culture of bali bali. I'm sure the foreign students here uh, had a hard time adjusting to this culture, right? Bali bali culture. And the passion that uh, Korean people have when they do something, um, you know, for example, uh, cheering in our World Cup soccer games, um, and so on. And I also think that the government, the leadership, had played good role into this. We had a strong leadership, and they, you know, came out with the Cyber Korea 21 in late 90s to early 2000s, and then the second next uh, president. IT839 program, and then uh, the current one, Creative Vitamin uh, program. <coughs> and also, uh, <laughs> private sectors, the service providers, uh, have been investing a lot into uh, this kind of environment. And the startups also came out, and the hardworking ethics of the Korean people with these excellent programs, I believe, were the drivers of the success so far and drivers of the uh, development. The, the top graph shows the, um, the first graph here is the development of the wired uh, network, the internet from the ISDN, DSL to fiber optic uh, networks that deliver giga uh, BPS and very fast. And then wireless as well, the fastest in the world. <coughs> so the average internet speed, um, this is in more than a year old, is that Korea on average 15 point something mega BPS compared to US, Japan, uh, you know, at least 50% faster than other developed countries. And wireless penetration, over 100%. LTE, um, can't really see very well, but this is a world map. And the, uh, the dark spots uh, show 2G or uh, no communication infrastructure like in Africa, South Siberia, and northern parts of uh, Canada, uh, uh, South America, in Amazon jungles, and so on. And the yellow is the 3G coverage. Uh, red is the LTE coverage. As you can see, LTE is still very new in most other countries, while Korea is going crazy racing among the uh, service providers to provide faster service to customers. Oops. Okay. So the traditional telcos revenue mostly came from these communications oriented, such as uh, 
home phone, uh, wireless, mobile, uh, internet, lease lines, and so on. But over the past few years, uh, so this is an example of uh, um, KT as of uh, about a year ago. So uh, compared to say three years ago, uh, over, over two year period, the non-communication oriented revenues increased from 12% to 33%. And this will likely increase as the, um, the service providers are providing more than just phone service, more than connection service, more value added services, as well as ICT convergent services. Well, what are some of these ICT convergent services? As I mentioned, IPTV, delivering movies, dramas, news, documentaries, and games and uh, education programs over the internet at a very, very excellent, good, uh, full definition, full uh, high definition quality. And also uh, mobile devices, you can enjoy the same program. Music, okay, online music streaming service okay, is another example of a convergent service. Um, we developed this uh, keyboard service robot for uh, children, education, as well as entertainment. Okay. Um, and using HomePad smart pads that can be used for um, well, video chatting, of course, as well as uh, uh, healthcare, wellness, uh, surveillance, watching you know, homes, as well as few other uh, related services, as well as entertainment. Another convergent service that's uh, growing uh, more popular is cloud service. Um, so whether you store your data using your laptop or um, desktop at home or on your mobile phone or smart pads, tablets, the data can be stored in the cloud and you can access them wherever you travel, not only just in Korea, but around the world. Okay, so this cloud computing service um, for personal usage, as well as for companies, as well as for many researchers who need a lot of computing power to do number crunching or big data uh, analysis these days. It's very expensive to install or to deploy or to set up your own machines. You need uh, you know, specialized rooms with air conditioning and humidity control, we call data centers, and you need people to manage those. So instead, people are beginning to use more of, more of cloud services. Okay. These cloud services are convenient because you just pay as you use those big machines or small machines. As well as you store your files, movies, uh, photos of your family and friends on the cloud. Um, the, also these uh, Healthcare, wellness um, are another good examples of uh, ICT convergence that you will see more and more. Okay, so remote healthcare and wellness service, um, <coughs> biometric monitoring. I don't know how many of you um, use a little gadget like this one, Fitbit or um, uh, job on like this. 
This is not um, uh, Palchi, <laughs> but these are devices, health monitoring devices or exercise monitoring devices. And you'll see more and more of these kind of devices being used to, for uh, wellness. Okay, people are more conscious about uh, how they exercise, how their health is, and so on. Uh, E-Hospital and Genome Cloud. Genome Cloud is a gene analysis using cloud computing. You need lots of computing resources and storage for data. And this is, and we've been working on uh, developing personalized uh, medicine uh, that um, fits for you. For example, I'm recovering from cold. Uh, some of you may have cold. Now, there are many, many cold medications, right? But there are some medication that really works well for you. There are some that doesn't. And we've been working on trying to identify uh, or, uh, the medicine that is really good for you know, individuals. And we're trying to apply this to cancer patients first. Cancer patients are the ones who are almost die. And they would love to try anything. But there are medication that doesn't work for these cancer patients, and the ones that really work better. So these kind of bioinformatics uh, technology and analysis is uh, uh, going towards that direction. Uh, smart energy, using energy uh, efficiently. Um, and uh, nowadays, we're, we, we experience disasters in Japan and other countries about the nuclear power plants and how terrible it can be. Um, so power, nuclear power uh, planting and generated by nuclear power plants is still the cheapest, but we need to save our energy in order to uh, you know, uh, reduce from building more power plants, whether they are nuclear power plants or uh, gas powered or fuel powered or so on. Now there have been a lot of work on uh, renewable energy, solar powered and wind powered uh, renewable energy, but they are very, in terms of the amount that they can generate compared to traditional methods, is still very small. Okay? So, uh, monitoring the energy and shutting down if necessary and collaborating uh, so that we don't have blackouts uh, is uh, the goal of the smart energy and smart grid effort. Uh, microgrid um, is an uh, effort for city, small size, or self-sustaining uh, and self-generating energy as well as uh, uh, cons conserving and so on. Okay, so I'm coming to an end. Um, the smart IPTV service will get smarter and smarter. If you have an experience, try one of the uh, smart TV services that uh, service providers are offering. Very cheap, you know, if you subscribe for two years, you can get from $10 to $15, $20. If you go to developed countries, $10 you pay here, it costs about $100. Okay. Uh, things are very cheap compared to uh, other developed countries. Um, the network innovation is another effort that's uh, going in the R&D centers of the service providers. Uh, that is the SDN or software defined networking, uh, network function virtualization. This effort, these buzzwords probably don't mean much to you, but network innovation is an effort that uh, trying to reduce the capex, uh, trying to um, be free from global vendors who sell such expensive uh, equipment and you're hooked onto them. Um, so this effort is going on around the world among the telcos and the R&D uh, people that trying to use uh, ordinary special uh, hardware, but you put your software and then um, 
you know, specialize on your own uh, environment and so on. The bottom line is trying to reduce the capex, capital expenditures, as well as opex. Okay. Now, smart home is another area of big convergence. Okay. With a wired wireless networking and with uh, appliances being connected, with entertainment systems being connected, with your mobile devices being connected, sharing data, and as you go outside, you can monitor home, you can control devices, home, and it's not quite there yet, but it's coming. This year, next year, very soon. In a few years, in other countries. Um, the, again, the health, education, security, surveillance, uh, uh, transportation and so on uh, are good areas of I ICT convergence. A lot of work is happening. Uh, intelligence and uh, uh, UI UX is another area that's being, uh, being developed and uh, making sure that uh, the users get great experience. Um, spent about 40 minutes, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, the concluding. I've, uh, in my talk today, I hope I was able to explain uh, the past and present of the uh, Korea and how Korea was able to develop as it is now, uh, particularly through the uh, ICT technology and environment, as well as a unique culture that Korean people have, and the strong leadership by the government, as well as uh, uh, investment uh, by the uh, private sectors. And we have become a global testbed for global uh, vendors. And we are living the future of many other uh, countries. And you are very fortunate enough to experience that by being here in Korea and living in Korea. And to prepare for the future, for better services, and so on, the telcos are trying to expand their business domains from telecom to ICT convergence. They've started few years ago, and they're continuing. So, think about what you can do in this wonderful, wonderful environment. Thank you very much.